Welcome back to Bible study, to uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians. Welcome back to John Campbell and to Derek Walker. Keep meeting like this. <laughs> it's a real blessing, really enjoyable. I'm going to read uh, from Galatians chapter 3, uh, verses 1 to 9, and John will pray. Thank you. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? <clears throat> are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Thanks, John. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Dear Father, we ask now, Lord, that you inspire us by the Holy Spirit, Lord, and lead us into all truth. Help us, Lord, here in the studio to handle your word diligently and faithfully and truthfully and honestly. Uh, we can only do that, Lord, with your help. Father, we want to glorify you. We want to glorify the, the Lord of all creation. We want, to, we want to be in awe of all that you have done. Help us, Lord, to handle this vital epistle, Lord, so that lives at home and, and, are changed, Lord, that indeed our own lives are changed by the wonderful truth contained within this. Open the eyes of our understanding, Lord. Enlighten us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Yeah, I, I'm recalling a... Uh, uh, a writing, or just a little phrase from F.B. Meyer. I don't know whether you oh, know yes. some of his wonderful books, yeah. but he describes how sometimes you can have um, clouds at sunsets and it's all a bit of a, a, a mishmash. And then suddenly the, 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 the light sort of lights, as it, a light as it were, on one cloud and that cloud yeah. suddenly appears really stunning. Yes. And I find sometimes when we're reading the scriptures, you're, you're, you're reading and it all looks a bit cloudy and then suddenly there's a flash yeah. on a verse that you've probably read a hundred times. Yeah. Mm. And I, I think that's what's happening yeah. with our readings in Galatians. And uh, I remember Gordon in the early Bible studies, he would say, Tim, what nuggets have you got today? <laughs> and I think the Lord just literally, you know, shows us these insights. Mm. Even though it seems as though Paul is, is sort of layering you know, and laboring the same point. Actually, there are, there are new angles and perspectives from the, the cutting of the diamond that we can see. Yeah. And on that note, I don't want to over-promise <laughs> uh, what we're going to get from this Bible study, but, you know, it's a well-known phrase, isn't it? You foolish <laughs> Galatians, who has bewitched you? And, and there's, of course, a background to it in chapter 2 which John is going to tell us about. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it is, a, we have to realize that this is, a, we've started in, in, in chapter three, verse one today, but it is continuous prose. Yeah. And so it, it hasn't, he hasn't suddenly dropped what he was talking about before and starting on a new argument. Yeah. Uh, you know, having presented the gospel in, the, in, 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 the, in chapter two, you know, he's, where he's really stood his ground on, on the veracity of the gospel, 
uh, and, and is so concerned about what's happening in the Galatian church, what's happening to the weaker brethren, how they're being seduced by these false brethren that he, he says are being, being called in. And, and the, the, the very truth of the gospel is being corrupted. He tells us, he starts talking about that early in chapter one, this corruption, this perversion of the truth. And, and, and I think we talked about this when we were back in chapter one, how that word that's translated perverted means actually sort of being turned back on itself and twisted. Mm. Mm. Um, and Paul, of course, is very concerned. Uh, he, he, you know, he's, he's wise enough to know that human nature can latch on to this sort of thing very quickly. Mm. And if that happens so early in the church's life, uh, then the church was doomed. So. He knew what his mission was, he knew what the Lord had called him to, and he was, I say he was fearless, I don't mean that he wasn't fearful, he probably yeah. was fearful at times, but he was fearless in yeah. prosecuting what the Lord had called him to do. And so when he realises what is going on and he realises how it's happening, this almost seems like a rhetorical question. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Now, people can get very excited about this bewitchment and talk about yeah. witchcraft and everything like that. Of course, at one end of the spectrum, that's you. true. But yeah. he's actually talking about who amongst these people are you listening to? Who, who, who's getting your attention here? Um, who's bewitching you and leading you astray? That's really what he's talking about. And, and, and so he said, oh, you can hear the frustration in, yeah. in, in Paul. Oh, foolish Galatians. Yeah. And um, I don't want to run ahead because you asked me to set the scene here, yeah. but this, this word that we read as foolish, actually it, it, it means there's a, there's a sinful ne negligence on your part of not engaging your brain mm. in order to see what's going on. That's a good way to yeah. put it. Well done. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. Mm. Keep setting the scene, Derek. Well, the immediate context is the previous verse, mm. verse 21 of chapter yep. 2. He says, uh, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Mm. So again, there's a reference to Christ's death. And in verse 1 of chapter 3, he, he, he kind of puts the antidote to the error as the crucifixion. Mm. So he's putting the crucifixion dead center of this. So before, for instance, in verse 16, he's been talking about justification by faith. Um, that's how we're saved, through faith alone, mm. in Christ alone, yeah. not by the works of the law. And he, he's ramming that. Mm. I think Luther said he's, he's banging our heads with it, you know, is, by the it? repetition exactly. of that in, in verse 16. Yeah. And he points out, actually, that the illogic of the position of trying to justify yourself by your own works. Mm. He says, if you do that, you nullify the cross. Mm. You make it superfluous. You make it unnecessary. You destroy the Christian faith. Mm. And so that's what he's saying. And then he says, oh, foolish Galatians, yeah. which John defined perfectly. He's not saying they didn't have the capacity. They're not morons. They can't, that they don't have the ability to think, but they haven't thought this through. And they're, they're actually in a contradictory position. Mm. And it's interesting to me how he relates the cross to justification by faith. And I think that's the big thing I would like to share right okay. now, yep. is what's the basis for justification by faith? is, is cr the cross, because he says, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly betrayed among you as crucified. Yeah. And if we have the vision of Christ crucified, yeah. we will never go back to legalism. That's, that's yeah. the antidote to legalism. Mm. But why is that? Because on the cross, Jesus achieved a great exchange. See, the, the problem is, man, God is perfectly righteous. Man is unrighteous, he's sinful. And it says, what fellowship has righteousness with iniquity. Mm. There can be no fellowship. Right. So we are cut off from God. So what God did is provide a reconciliation. Mm. This word reconciliation in the Greek means exchange. He provided a great exchange. And what Jesus did on the cross, he took our sin, he took our unrighteousness, and he exchanged it for his righteousness. He offered up his perfect righteousness for us on the cross, as an as a offering to God, but he also took, that's the first three hours of the cross, he offered up his righteousness as a burnt, sweet-smelling offering to God. The second three hours, 
the Son turned to darkness, and he became the sin offering. So he took our sin. And in himself, in Christ, he achieved a great exchange mm. of our sin and his righteousness. Mm. So that when we believe on Christ, we are put into Christ, and in Christ that transaction happens for us. Yeah. And his, our sin is now remitted, is in, released to him, and, and away from us, and we receive his imputed righteousness. His righteousness is imputed to us. So, just to say, that is a wonderfully encapsulated, you know, talk, a declamation of the gospel, of, of the cross, mm. and of faith in, in the cross. I know you can keep talking, but that was yeah. just, it, just a pause and think, and it's almost worth encapsulating that for something to go out <laughs> more widely. As well, really, really enjoyed listening to that yes. because it, you, you, in a few words, you explained the exchange, the reconciliation, and the faith. Carry on. I just no, wanted no, to take you. a pause yeah. to punctuate I it. I appreciate that. Yeah, because that this is the gospel, isn't it? Yeah. What the finished work of the cross. Yeah. So once you understand that, and then that righteousness, the moment you believe, mm. that righteousness of Christ is imputed to you. Mm. And on that basis, God declares you righteous. Yeah. Not just forgiven, but actually righteous. So that's, sight. I'll bring John in there. That, that, again, you need to pause that God declares us, de deems us yes. righteousness, decrees. Yes. Mm. That's, that should be the most humbling thing. You should never have Christians going around boasting and parading themselves, you know, as Pharisees, as it were, if they know this truth. Well, that's right. I, it, if they know this truth, I mean, most of them have read it, but it hasn't, it hasn't hit home. It hasn't, they haven't had this revelation in their hearts and spirits and minds. The, their minds are not being renewed to this truth, mm. which is desperately, desperately sad. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, you know, I don't say that in a critical sense. It, 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 the fact is, if, you're, if this stuff isn't preached from the pulpit regularly, you know, week in, week out. You can change the form, but the message is the same. If, if this isn't delivered week in, week out, people will never get it because it's by hearing the word of faith that and you Paul get Paul is the example. He's ramming it one Absolutely. after another because we've got Absolutely. to get it. Yeah. That's right. But, uh, but I want to get to that point now where you have believed. At that point, it, it's an instantaneous, you are declared righteous. Yes. Mm. You're born again. Yeah. Yes. It's yes, the new birth. Yes. If you believe that, if you're declared righteous, and then God also imparts his righteousness yeah. to you, his righteous life to yeah. you, and you're born again, yeah. and you now have the righteousness of Christ, the, his imparted righteousness in you, mm. Christ living in you now, the righteous one, yeah. which will now empower you to live a changed life. Mm. But your legal standing before God is, is through the imputed righteousness of Christ. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I think what, partly what Paul is saying is, if you get, once you've got the revelation of that, that you are now justified, you are righteous in God's sight, there is now no condemnation in Christ Jesus, then that kills legalism in you. Yeah. Because yeah. legalism is, tr you're still trying to get righteous. Mm. You, you've got, you're making the efforts in your soul and in your efforts, and, and you're denying the cross mm. when you do that. So if you have the... Once we really get that revelation, we will relax on the inside and rest in the finished work of Christ, that we are accepted by God. Mm. We are righteous before God. Mm. Now, and now we will actually start living the life of the Spirit. Mm. You know, Romans 8 is the life of the Spirit, yeah. right? Yeah. But how does it begin? Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now that's no right. condemnation yeah, for those in right. Christ Jesus. That's now, right. some translations, sadly, have... Uh, then for those who walk after the spirit and after the flesh, yes, right. That's which right. is a mistake. No. That's been in other words, saying it's contingence. It's on been imported from a few the verses legalism. later. Yes, very see. good. Yeah. It actually belongs yeah, a few weeks yeah. later. So it, sh it is literally there is now therefore no condemnation in Christ. Full stop. Yeah. If you're in Christ, yeah. you are released from condemnation. You are justified. The other and parallel. That's the foundation, yeah. forgive me. Yes, no, that's go. the foundation for the life in the spirit. That's right. Because now you can relax. That's it. You, you I was just picking up on the relax thing. because yeah. of Watchman Nee's book on Ephesians, sit, walk, stand. Yes. yes. 
So you're seated with him in heavenly places. You, you've been translated to that new You've got to learn how to sit paradigm. before you can really that's walk it. properly. Yeah, that's hard, isn't it, for you know, humanity, yeah. you know, is always striving, and, and for religion, for religious humanity, it's quite a hard thing to swallow. But this <laughs> is all done yeah. for us. This is yeah. Luther's revelation, though. Yeah. This is why yeah, he got is. so excited, because yeah, exactly. he, he, he realised that th this is where it starts. Yeah. And, and until you've got that, yeah. nothing else really works. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and yet you can, you can sort of be uh, under the ministry and appear to have got it, and yet still be bewitched by the other. Yes, it, the it, other it, because it, it, for most of us it's a progressive revelation. Mm. Um, uh, uh, Luther, it came like a thunderbolt. Yeah. But most of us it's progressive as we study and hear yeah. good teaching. And in that interim period, you're still struggling. You're still, you, you, your flesh is condemning you. Yeah, you. Christ is not condemning you. Um, you feel condemned, but that condemnation is coming from your flesh, not from Christ. Yeah. And it's important to understand that. And this is why it's so important to learn and practice and pray about walking in the spirit and not according mm. to the flesh. Mm. You know, back, we're back to the rowing boat and the, and, and the sailing boat again. Yeah. You know, we're learning. You, you listen, we'll fall. It doesn't matter. But it's learning and practicing and saying, Lord, please help me. I no, want I, to walk according to the spirit yeah. only. I want to be totally obedient to you and not to the law. Yeah. And it, it's worth saying, because it might help others understand, that Paul writes constantly about being dead to the law. What he really means is being free from the law, being free from the accusations and the demands of the law. Um, you're free from them. Mm. Absolutely, they don't apply to you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Very, very, it's very because good. if you've died with yeah. Christ, yes. you're no longer under the jurisdiction That's of right. the law. That's right, you're in a different jurisdiction altogether. But that's the irrationality he's talking about. You know, you foolish Galatians, he's saying you're being irrational. Yeah, you're not yeah. thinking this through. Yeah. Because if, if you truly grasp the crucifixion, mm. you know, and that it's a finished work, that when you put your trust in Christ, you were made righteous yeah. through, through faith. Uh, and therefore, this legalism now is you attempting to achieve something that has already been done by Christ. And it's irrational. And so we, it, I can relate to that because in mathematics, you know, mm. which, which was my subject, yeah. you know, at university. Still is. You, oh, you yeah. do, it's all about consistency. And, and there's a type of proof called reductio ad absurdum. Yeah. You, you say, okay, let's, let's, let's assume a certain premise. And then if you can argue it through to a falsehood, you know that premise is wrong. That's right. And that's what Paul is, is doing. And think it through. Yeah. If Christ is truly crucified, you're already righteous, yeah. so why are you trying to buy into the thing that you're not righteous and you have to achieve it by your legalism? Yeah. There's, there's and he says that that's absurd. That's right. So that there's, there's a, a, a dimension here which is there in Romans 8, and that is um, the receiving of the Spirit with a capital S. So, um, and he's saying, did you receive the Spirit by observing the law? And that is, is illogical as well. You know, it, yeah. But some people do still practice and believe that, you, that just by ritual and by repetition and by observance, you can, yeah. you can actually receive I, the I, I, think, I think that the real human problem, let's bring it down to, to life's experience, is that you might know as a fact that you're righteous in Christ, but you also know as a fact that you fall very far short. And, and, and it's, it's trying to rationalize the two. And it occurs to me that this might help. You know, if, if you take up citizenship, if you apply to a country to be a citizen, <coughs> and you go through all the, all, all the rigmarole in doing that, eventually you get, let's say, a British passport. And now you're British. Doesn't matter what you were before, mm. you're now British. You've got a British passport, that, that's your certificate, mm. regardless of you as a person or your personality. This is really, it, it's not a perfect analogy yeah. by me, but this is really what's happening here. You are in Christ and you belong to Him and He has declared you righteous. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 
how you are, and this is, this, you need to try and divorce how you are from that truth, mm -hmm. because that truth cannot be watered down, it mm -hmm. cannot be taken away from you by any other court, mm -hmm. it's, that's it, it's set in perpetuity. Um, this other bit of you, which you are recognizing, what you're saying is that's in conflict with this truth and I'm struggling with it and I'm trying to bring the two into unison. You can't and you never will. That's the truth. But as you, as you begin to say, well, I'm going to jettison this and I'm going to just major on the fact that I'm in Christ, mm -hmm. he will start to deal with this person down here. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny, uh, Derek and I were talking uh, a while ago about this because we've both been having a go at the 16-8 diet, you know, where you yeah. fast for 16 hours and you eat within an eight-hour window. And, and we were talking about it. And, and I, I said to Derek, you know, I, it's very natural for me to, to not have breakfast till midday and to have my last meal by half past seven at night, to eat within an eight-hour window oh. and not, yeah. not to... But... The moment I impose that regime on myself, I, it, I'm looking at my watch, I'm feeling hungry at half past <laughs> ten in the morning. It's, it's, I, I'm now imposing anxiety, legalism yeah, upon myself, which I can't keep. If right. I just allow it to happen, it just yeah. happens. And if I get, yeah. you know, if one day it's 17.9, who cares? Yeah. So th this is what I want to explore because, <laughs> it, you know, it seems uh, you're, you're more analytical than me, but it seems as though this is the first time in the whole of this letter that Paul talks about the Spirit, which is not something that's conjured up by us. We received the Spirit. Yes. We, we, at that moment of, of, of faith in this truth of the crucifixion and mm. the great exchange um, and the... the, the the sacrifice and the, the whole story of, of, of the, the crucifixion. Um, but by the way, and the resurrection, because I see from Romans mm, yeah. 10, it's very clear that yes, it's yes. believing mm. that God has raised him from the dead mm. and you will be saved. But um, something happens at that point when someone is born again yeah. of the Spirit. And again, it's beyond looking at your watch yes. and trying to do anything. You suddenly receive the Spirit. So Paul is talking about those who have received the Spirit. And that's talking about at the moment of yeah. salvation. Yes, so, and, and you so, have but they are, they are spiritually alive at the point that Paul yeah. is writing these very hard-hitting yes. things. They are born again, they are born again. Um, uh, Christians, you know, spiritually alive, they have the new, new birth, and yet they can be bewitched. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Which we all... alive. But I just want to just yeah, go to that right. point because you've encapsulated so beautifully about the great exchange, um, this um, point that someone is born again. Mm. It's not a process, is it? It's, no. it's absolute it's a moment. moment. So it does about 40 things in that yeah. moment of... Oh, well, let's go through the 40 things. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. No, no, okay. No, but that's but, quite but something. There are, yeah. two, there are two fundamental things that happen together. Yeah. And I think it helps to understand there's the... Li so later on when we talk about the blessing of Abraham, mm. that blessing includes two fundamental things. The first is the legal aspect. With, they, and it's in the famous Habakkuk 2, 4 verse as well that's quoted as the key verse really from the Old Testament, which is the righteous by faith shall live. Mm. So you've got two things here. You've got that the, right, the imputed righteousness of Christ, which is the legal side, mm. and you've got the imparted righteousness of Christ, or the life of mm. Christ, or, which is given by the Spirit. So the moment you believe you are put in Christ, the first thing that happens, but it all happens in the same second, yeah. but logically the first thing that happens is the imputed righteousness of Christ is given to you. And that is positional truth. That is done deal. You are then justified on the basis of that. Mm -hmm. And on the basis of that justification now, you are also connected to the life of Christ, the Spirit, in that very same second, because mm -hmm. God doesn't bound by time. No. In the same second, on the basis of the imputed righteousness, He now gives His Spirit. Yeah. So the blessing of Abraham is first of all justification by faith and secondly it's the impartation of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit comes yep. inside you, he recreates your spirit, makes you a new man, yep. but the old one's been crucified with Christ, 
Mm. So all in that split second mm. of, of trusting in Christ, even if you don't understand all the no, ins and outs, God does it for That's you right. uh, as a gift of grace. Yeah. And now you have the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit brings you into fellowship with God. Mm. And Jesus said, knowing God is eternal life, John 17, 3. Yeah. So the blessing is legal first, the foundation, and now we come into fellowship with God. Relationship, yeah. whereby the, you know, the Spirit testifies with our spirit, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Exactly. You know, we're there. So suddenly we are part of the family, the spiritual family. We're spiritually alive and we are born again. But for um, different people, it, it, it is experienced yeah. in a different way. Some people it is an absolute transformational mm. moment and a wonderful, exhilarating experience. Then for others, it's a sort of gradual appreciation of, yes. of what has taken place. Exactly. But, but you are fundamentally different. Yes, you, yes. in you, your spirit you are. You see, yeah, yeah in your spirit, but that, that has an but enormous then impact the, then on that your... Then begins to affect yeah. everything yeah. else, yeah. your desires and, yeah. and your thinking. And, and it is a process then. And it, it really helps to understand that there are two realms of truth. There's, there's positional truth mm. that John was talking about that is, doesn't change. And then there is experiential truth, yeah. right? So for instance, by virtue of my birth, I, there are certain aspects I'm positionally true about me. I'm a man, yeah. all right? I can't change that, no. No. right? Uh, I have blue eyes, you know, um, and, and other aspects of me my, you know, are true because of my birth. And, and that is, is, can't be changed. Even if I have the worst day in the world, I'm still Derek. Yeah. I'm still a blue-eyed right. man. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's positional truth. Mm -hmm. Now, but justification is positional truth. You know, if I have the worst day in the world and I sin, you know, I really let God down, you know, I'm still righteous in Christ mm -hmm. because it doesn't stand on my performance. And that's the experiential, on, yeah. you know. Yeah. But experientially, it does affect my fellowship with that's God. Right. See, there's, yeah. like in the a citizenship, yeah. or, or in terms of a, a marriage, for instance, or whatever, you know, if I sin against my wife in some way, God forbid, um, you know, we're still married. The, posi right. the position is the same. Yeah. The relationship is, is stronger than that, you know. Yeah. But my fellowship with her is affected. Yeah. And, you know, there are consequences when we sin. I know. You I know, know. It, it does affect Yeah, I wanted to sort of break in there because the, um, the other aspect, so this is wonderful truth that we are ministering to each other and, and I hope folks watching are feeling, you know, really blessed by this, you know, depth of teaching for you personally. But th there's another aspect and that is the, the testimony. Because, you know, there are, Plenty of people flying around, you know, uh, in the Western world, let's say, who are born again Christians, who say, "Yeah, I'm a born again Christian." Do you know what I mean? Who who don't have the testimony, and there's a danger, isn't there, that 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 it becomes a term rather than a a, a, um, a truth within someone. Mm. Yes, you know, because this could all be theoretical. Mm. And I want to try and, try and distinguish between the theoretical and the life-changing testimony. Well, I, yes. So we I, have I, a I, real problem in the Western world because no. we've got Christianized, we're Christendom, and there's a lot of people in, 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 within evangelicalism as well, that, where there's a lot of people who are in the crowd, as it were, mm. who are going along with the, um, with, with the, the club, jargon yes. and not uh, not really grasping it no that's right so the positional truth remains true for all of them if they're generally born yes. again the, the, yes. but the but the experiential truth is 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 devoid in many cases and and you know it's easy to understand why if you're moving in certain groups you know if you're looking to to science to education to your own intellect to uh, to medical advancements if you're looking to all these things Which as the sources of truth relationships. That, 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 that's right the, these these have really got nothing to offer you in terms of eternal truth mm. but so, but you're looking to all these and yes and you would simply say thank you Lord for my medicine and thank you Lord for this and that and the other and, and, and that's okay you know but you're not looking 
at the cross and what was achieved there. And you're not looking into the scriptures to see what the Lord says about you and, and how he now requires you to behave. Mm. This is post-salvation. Mm. He requires a certain standard of behavior from us. See, I just wonder, John, whether, because I, 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 like us all, we yearn for revival. Yes. I do. I, yes. I yearn to see, you know, I, that our nation you know, we, to move across the world, as, as Phil Potter used to sing. Oh Lord, I long to see you move, to move across the world. Watch your spirit set creation free. Um, but um, there's something missing because we're not seeing revival. And I wonder whether actually folks have, have sort of had a, an intellectual assent to the gospel, but never. Mm. The, the, that life-changing heart belief in your heart is missing. So therefore, we are, um, we're taught with speaking truths, but many folks who are going around, and I, I don't want to be judgmental, God judges, he judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart, but many folks are going around with the, the checklist or the statement of faith or, or, or something else, but actually that critical first point of genuine belief that puts you in the position of being born again mm. is actually missing. Mm. Mm. And, that, uh, and that's my only explanation for why we're not seeing the fruit of it. And I, I know there's a lot of theories about, oh, some backslide, some, you know, and you're yeah, not persevering yeah. in the faith and things like that, but there, there's something missing. Otherwise, it would be explosive, would it not? Mm. It would just absolutely wipe out all the other flim flam of the modern world you know people who are absolutely I think your analysis is probably right but I don't think the Lord has been caught out by it one jot <laughs> no. um, which is why he, he, he Lord forgive me for telling yeah. you yeah. saying why you do anything yeah. but I'm just drawing some conclusions from what I know if you look at the history of revivals particularly in the last 200 years um, you know you know it's one of the things that it is 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 a common occurrence is that people are in a meeting in a church or wherever they're meeting together and the, the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon them and they land on the floor weeping calling yeah. and being repentant yeah. and, and that's just the grace of God suddenly they realize who God is it's not that they weren't believers it's not that they weren't saved beforehand but they've come face to face with what they've been saved into Mm. And, and I don't, unless God strips away the layers of the, the you know, some, some people don't have that experience because no. their life's experience has damaged them so much that they're just incapable of, of, of acknowledging that truth. See, our question, are they saved? And I know I'm being, well, maybe pushing Well, I say to, it's a really the leadership believe... of the church because there's something missing. See, what Derek, and Derek leads the church and preaches yeah. and teaches, that, for me, is, is a dynamic expose of what is there in the gospel of, of the cross and, and salvation. Yes. And yet, their lip service is paid to this in all the homilies across all the established churches, yes. but they are literally dying on the vine. Yes. And... Well, I mean, who, who knows it whether... Preached. Yeah, Sorry. with, with awesome. real conviction. Awesome. It has to be preached conviction. You see, if you, if, you, if you go through a salvation experience and land up in a church which doesn't take you from that point further, but it's just, you know, yeah. what I say, it's, it's spiritualizing what the Chancellor said last week, which is what happens in many, many churches, yeah. then you're never going to grow. And, and, and all that will grow is calluses on your heart because mm. the devil will come in and do his own planting. Yeah. And so it, it, it will appear, you know, in many of these people, that, but they're not saved. But the Lord yeah. knows. That's why he does. But um, Lord knows. And, it's but very I, important for people to know, folks watching, it is, it is to know that they're born again. Mm. Yeah. I, so, I and think I want it, to get to that critical point because that is every, that's game, yeah. set and match at this yeah. I mean, in, in some circles, this is quite a controversial point to yeah. make, but I, I do believe a fault is a lot in the preaching. Yeah. And, and the last few years, I've, I've come to, to realize that we don't preach strong enough that in part of saving faith is, and I'm not saying you have to be perfect in no. this, but there has to be a submission to Christ as Lord. Mm. You know, that faith is a commitment a commitment of the heart to Christ. Your trust, you trust in Christ um, for your salvation, but you have to surrender your, you have to give your heart to him mm. as Lord. Now, some people think, 
Oh, it's, I, be, I believe, you know, they, they have a mental assent. That's him. That Christ is the Savior, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they would say, yes, I, I agree mentally with that. But they truly have not given their heart to Christ. Mm -hmm. they, they, and, and so they, they might have even said a sinner's prayer, but they, they haven't given their heart to Christ. And, and they might not be born again, and that might be why their life hasn't changed at all. Mm -hmm. you know, so there is the possibility, as you, I think you were hinting mm -hmm. at, that they're not actually born again. Mm -hmm. And the Bible does say, you know, you need to make sure that you are in yeah. Christ. Um, but having said that, I don't want people to come under condemnation if they're, no. not, if they're not Mr. Perfect Christian. No, no, but that doesn't just mean, the, uh, you, know, you know, it's so, yeah, uh, Paul, Paul, so passionate, <laughs> uh, it's in Corinthians, where I, I implore you to be reconciled to God. I mean, if hell is real, if it's real, mm. we, we want to get this right. We yeah. don't want to have a, a sort of cheap, superficial um, uh, entry into the Christian club. And we, we <coughs> want people to be born again. Mm. Yes. But I, 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 of we the do, spirit. No, we do. Yeah. And I think Derek is absolutely right. I, I stand shoulder to shoulder with him on this. Yeah. I think the problem is in the preaching. Yes. And let, uh, uh, because that's what changes people. It's, it's, it's the word heard in faith which Correct. changes you. Correct. And if you're not hearing that, I mean, look, at, Paul is the perfect example. Look at his passionate preaching. Exactly. But where do you hear stuff like that? I, um, it, I don't, and it no. grieves me what so much. What caused the Reformation, me. right? It's Luther and others preaching of yeah. Galatians. Yeah. And, and it was preaching it, as you say, with conviction. Mm. That actually turned Europe around. I mean, that, that brought rev more than revival, reformation. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. that's and what's the, missing. The power's in the word. The, that's what's the gospel missing. is the power of God unto salvation. But There's more passion, isn't there, in other movements yes, it's, it's not you in know, the... There are mass movements, petitions, and all sorts of passion. Yeah. But there's not passion in the pulpits, no, no, generally there's speaking. not. And it, it isn't the individuals. You're right in, 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 in that, you know, your analysis of what you see. You're yeah. right. But the Lord holds the pastors, the shepherds, to account. Mm -hmm. And if they're not doing what they're supposed to do, they're going to have to answer to him. Now, I'm not saying they're not saved, mm -hmm. although I believe a lot of them aren't. No. Um, because they couldn't say and do what they say and do if they were yeah. saved. Yeah, uh, that's right. So, I think thank one, you. I, 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 to understand saving yeah, I'm faith. I'm still burdened by it because yeah, I'm no, I can understand. We, our our the country pulpit. is going the, down the tubes. It's the pulpit. That's the only place it will change, from the pulpit. And I th one kind of story that helped me on this point is, is that imagine a kingdom, all right, and it was a very righteous king, good king, wonderful king, powerful king. Uh, but a rebellion was stirred up in the provinces of the kingdom. And, and many people believed the lies of the, of the rebel who said, oh, this king is, doesn't really want your best, follow me, you know. And so a big rebellion developed. And then the king um, could have had, he had the power to destroy all the rebels, but instead, he chose to offer them a free pardon. And he said, look, if you will come back to me, if, um, uh, I will give you a free pardon. Mm. That's the gospel. And so some people's idea of the gospel, I think, is they're, they're this rebel. They, okay, they, ha they haven't been living under God's authority. Um, and so they think they can come and go back and receive their free pardon and then go back to being a rebel again. But, 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 you know, that, that isn't, obviously, in the, in the nature of the king's offer is you come back and you submit yourself to my authority, mm. at least in principle. Mm. You won't necessarily be a perfect citizen immediately, but in principle, you accept my authority. Yeah. You repent of your rebellion. Mm. And then I will give you the free pardon. Yeah. Now, that's not work salvation. It's not saying, no, well, no. look, you need to do three no. years probation to prove that, you know. It's simply the attitude of heart that I accept the authority of the king. Yeah. And, and you spend the rest of your life, you know, working that out. But I think some people are trying to just get the free pardon that's right. and that's right. carry on in their sin. Yeah. Uh, you know, we might still sin, don't get me wrong. I know. But, but it's an attitude of heart. It's an and attitude there's a cynicism in, yeah. you know, just signing up to something it, to cover it, yourself. It, it is. Well, the Christian confession is Jesus is Lord. Yeah. So if, an, if there isn't that thing in your heart that, in, at least in principle, mm. Jesus is my Lord, yeah. 
then, then you've got to realize maybe you haven't had that mm -hmm. moment of. Mm -hmm. We certainly pray. I, I feel, John, uh, uh, I should ask you to just pray for folks on this point that the Lord will, they'll, they'll have a revelation and that even at this point they would believe and ask the Lord into their hearts. The, however many folk. I'm not asking people yeah. to touch the TV no, screen. No, 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 you no. Know, or to make a donation yes. on the back of it. I, I just feel <laughs> let's, okay, you let's know, do just that. Let's do give that. a moment for folks who have been listening carefully, as I have, to what's been said, to just have the opportunity to open their hearts. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us to this place right now, this second, Lord. Thank you for orchestrating our conversations and Lord and stirring up our hearts and the hearts of the viewers and Lord I pray now for those viewers Lord who who just know that there's something missing in their uh, so-called Christian walk Lord they they recognize that they don't have this enlightenment of, of what we've been talking about and it could be for a multitude of reasons Lord but you know you know the reasons for each and every person, why they are where they are and why they're not walking in a fuller sense of who you are. Now, Lord, we pray for each one of them, Lord, that you would touch them now by your spirit, that they would say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I accept you, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for my ignorance. Forgive me my rebellion. I accept you as king and as saviour. Yes, Lord and as Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would bless them all today mm. and they would know that they've taken the next step mm. in walking with you in the Spirit. In Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yeah. We might not hear, this, like in the Welsh Valleys, the sound of hymn singing from the mine <laughs> shafts, but, you know, by God's grace, that's, yeah, you know, it's trust wonderful. that, you it's know, things. Wonderful, isn't it? You look at the revivals, <coughs> I think about the revival in the Hebrides, and yeah. I, I, I met a very elderly lady about 10 years ago who'd been a young girl in the revival. Yeah. And she said it was just amazing. This was under Duncan Campbell, yeah. he, you know, he was leading, mm. he said, amazing, he said, because we didn't have telephones and all radios or anything. He said, we just knew by the spirit where a meeting was on. Yeah. And you go out of your door and you see everybody walking towards it. <laughs> amazing, isn't it? Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> yeah. heal our land, heal our land. Well, can do um, it again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, so that sort of all came from the receiving of the spirits in verse two. Um, I'm waiting for someone saying, "No, we haven't quite finished verse one yet." <laughs> but <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> Come on, <Terry. laughs> well, I just wanted to point yeah, one please. little nugget yeah. out, which was the the when it says crucified, and in chapter two, verse twenty, "I have been crucified with Christ." That's in the perfect tense. Oh yeah. In the Greek, which is. A significant tense. I mean, the normal one is aorist, which simply means it. this thing happened. It doesn't give any details. It, it's just happened. The perfect tense is always interesting when it happens because it means it's something accomplished in the past with ongoing consequences. Okay? So when he says Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified, that means placarded. It means like somebody would put up a big sign in the market center you know, of the, the important news, like Luther did with his 95 yeah. thing. Pla you know, he presented publicly. He said, I presented Christ crucified, and it's not just the fact that 2,000 years ago he was crucified. This crucifixion has, is relevant now. It has ongoing consequences. In other words, the offer of righteousness that flows out from the cross is, is right now. Mm -hmm. And if you've accepted Christ, it means that effect of the crucifixion is yours right now. You, you have the righteousness of Christ. You can come to God as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And your sins are forgiven and you are no longer under condemnation. And you have the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because of that righteousness, yeah. you have the Spirit. And, and so it's beautiful, really, that the crucifixion is not just 2,000 years ago. Mm. It's changed our very state of being right mm. now. And that's mm. the revelation that Paul is saying, look, if you can just get that revelation, yeah. you'll, forget le you'll leave legalism behind. Yeah. You know, legalism can't be true if you understand the crucifixion. Mm. Mm. Wonderful. What I love about this Bible study is that 
um, you can go down a rabbit hole of negativity, but we're not. We're actually, it's, give, it's giving us a platform yeah. to speak such wholesome truths about, about the gospel and salvation. It's wonderfully positive. And um, ev even though Paul, yes, he's berating them, it's, it's sort of through that we are, we're seeing the real nugget of truth. Mm. Which, is, which is what we've been talking about. Can't go through it all again. <laughs> but um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then, then he develops an argument from their experience. The yeah. next few verses, mm. he's basically saying, okay, he's, it, the crucifixion contradicts your, that position. Yeah. Yeah. But now he's, he just points to their own experience. He says, yeah. look, how, how were you right. saved in the first place? Was it, yeah. it was, you didn't get there by being circumcised, yeah. by taking on the law of Moses? Yeah. You received the yeah. Spirit, you got saved yeah. through the hearing yeah. of, the, of the gospel. And, and so he's, he's, he's getting them to, again, he's saying, you're foolish, you haven't thought this through, think about it. How were because you saved there's the another first side place? to it, is that, you know, it, the whole culture was observant. So, you know, if, if it's observance that's the point, then that's where, every, then everyone is saved, as it were, in their observance. Um, uh, and uh, you can imagine how threatening that this actually is to that whole culture, which is on the other paradigm, which is yes. observance. Yes. It's, 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 it's really important for the whole culture to see the distinction of I would say it's. No, it, it, I, I understand what you're saying, but I think it, that, that that's a worldwide problem. Yes, you know that's they're, true. they're different cultures, but these, all of these cultures are observant to their own culture and yeah. honour their culture, and it affects the way they behave as societies yeah. and as individuals, and and that is always a problem. Yeah, always, yeah. always yeah. a problem. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, this is the only answer. There is no other answer, yeah. and and it isn't saying because people get offended and we don't want to offend anyway. It isn't saying that your culture is rotten or your traditions are rotten or your observances are rotten. It's just, it's there's no saying, way to the Father. Absolutely, it is no that. way to the Father yeah. um, because in, in prosecuting the way you live within your culture, you will still fall, you will still fail yeah. over, over, over certain aspects of it. According to somebody else's mm. standard, you will fail. Uh, so we have to get away from that in order to have assurance mm -hmm. we need to go for this this whole chapter you know and and indeed into chapter four uh, paul is, is is promoting the superiority of the gospel over uh, over, over over the over works yeah. right the way through it's vastly superior in mm -hmm. every aspect yeah. and he he begins to do that bit by bit he makes his comparison you know the spirit with the works of the flesh and yeah. truth against lies and all all the way through so I think we might get to verse 5 today. Are we, are we going to work through these, these verses? But we might not um, get to verse 9. Who, no. No, we've got about six minutes left. One thing just to point out in whole, yeah. Paul's thinking, in, it's really yeah. Romans 11, 6. Yeah. If by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works... It is no longer grace, otherwise work is no longer work. I just want to point out, because it's everywhere in Galatians, that in Paul's thought, and he's absolutely right, of course, there is only two, fundamentally, there are only two approaches yeah. to, to being saved, to yeah. being right with God, and that is grace or works. Yeah. And so he's asking these questions, you know, tell me, he says, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? In other words, there are only these two possibilities. Right. It's yeah. either grace or That's it's right. works. Yeah. Grace is by hearing and just receiving, believing what God has done for you, or works. And he, he, he has this contrast mm. going throughout. Yeah, very good. By the hearing of faith, are you so foolish? Have you begun in the Spirit? Are you now being... Perf made perfect by the flesh. So the, he now characterizes it, the, the works of the law is the flesh, self-effort, mm. versus the spirit, which is, which is God's grace mm. working in us. Mm. But in his mind, it's either or. That's right. And the two don't mix. Yeah. You either have one or the other. Mm. Take your pick. And of course, one works and one doesn't work. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great illustration 
Romans 11, because it, it is God's grace. Yes. He's chosen them. He has a plan and a purpose before the foundation of the well, earth. Is, know, you you know, that, yes. It just, all, all of our, you know, righteousness is as filthy rags. It's, it's just, it's, it just doesn't compare no. to the glory of God's grace. Yeah. The other, the other verse See, that you should yeah. connect yes, with that please. is Romans 4, 16, just the first bit. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Yeah. So, in one side, you have grace, but another way of saying that is faith. Yeah. Because faith and grace yeah. go together. Yeah. Whereas the contrasting thing is, is law and works, mm. you see. Mm. So, it's either one or the other. And so he's saying, you know, did you receive the Spirit? Were you born again? Yeah. By your own efforts, by your works, yeah. by being a good, by trying to be a Jew, by trying yeah. to be circumcised? Of course, the answer is no. You yes. received it, the Spirit. And obviously, they had a clear experience of receiving the Spirit by the hearing of faith. Yeah, so and, he's saying, you know, wake up, you know. And it is logical. I mean, if, if, if it's God's promise, it, that's where it, it's, where's the origin? You know, it's initiated by God. Yes. So again, how, how can we add to the promise? Mm. We can't. Mm. We're we, not, pro it's we not can't. our promise. What's we, a, what kind of promise is it for sinful man to a holy God? You know, what, what, where, where can, what can we offer from, it's like trying to lift up, you know, somehow lift up your feet by your bootstraps or something. Yes. You know, you just yes. don't have the capacity. No. To do it? No, you don't. But every other life experience in life leads us to believe that self improvement is yes. is upon us, and mm. so it's very difficult to translate. I, and I yeah. th I think I mean the, the Bible uses the word all the way through, but I think the word faith can be problematic to some people mm. because they don't really understand what it is, and they think it's something they've got to work at, and they think, I, I, I'm, I'm falling short here. I understand this grace bit, but I don't understand this faith bit. But mm. it's just simply believing. Mm. Yeah. Just believe yeah. the Lord. That's it. That's faith. So hearing by faith is hearing and believing. Mm. Yeah, right. I believe it. It's as simple and, and as that. And folks need so to be, trusting. yeah, it, yeah. And so, Obviously, those in the sort of the, the rational camp say, oh, you know, uh, uh, try to portray faith as unreasonable. But actually, it's, it's emotions that are unreasonable. Yeah. You know, faith is based on, we've been talking yeah. about, the, the finished work, the, the facts. Mm. That there are facts there which are immovable. I think yes. C.S. Yeah. Lewis sort of writes a little bit about this. And um, uh, it's your feelings that, that are volatile, but the facts stay the same. So if you have faith in the facts, it, it's, um, mm. it is not um, fantasy. No. It's reasonable. Yes. Right. It's just you're not, you're not being is. persuaded. And I think many people who say they are being rational and reasonable are actually being persuaded by their feelings. Well, they are. No, they're not actually Because the scripture says that their reasonable. minds are at enmity with God. And, and, and therefore, they're unable to, to take the facts. Yeah. I mean, we, in, in, in secular facts, we can take facts, we can think critically and come to a reasonable conclusion. Yeah. Somebody else might process them another way and come to another conclusion, and then you can talk about it and argue it and come to an agreed solution. Yeah. But if, you, if you're only going to yeah. rely on your emotions and not on your ability to think critically, yeah. you, you, you won't arrive at the right conclusion. And I think some people are blinded to the facts. Yes, that's right. They can't see them. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay, so we're just, we're down into the last minute. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's so much in these just couple of verses at the beginning of um, uh, Galatians 3, and I hope that it's been a blessing to you because it has been for me. You know, we, we have a faith that's rooted in the promises of God's mm. word by his grace, by his initiative. You know, we, we believe and we are saved. And I hope that you will enjoy the spiritual journey with us as we go through further in chapter three. Thank you.